WCCO is bringing you special coverage of the Canadian wildfires fueling our summer of smoke. They've already triggered a record number of air quality <laughs> alerts, and until the fires are out, those alerts will keep coming. Investigative reporter Jonah Kaplan shows us how meteorologists in Canada are testing new ways to predict the next alert. It's been bad in Minneapolis. It's been bad in Chicago. It's been bad in New York. It's been worse, though, for our neighbors in Canada. There are only so many days of summer in downtown Winnipeg, too many this year looking like this. There will be four days in a row where air quality is, is poor. Then we might get a, a break, and then it comes again. Tamara Kraszewski and Wolf Schnitker are visiting from Ontario. They're avid bikers and swimmers, and they say their outdoor exercise routines now include a check of the weather and the air quality index. How has it changed? I, I do try and do it in, in the morning. Um, I'm reluctant to do it later on in the day because it just seems to be worse then. But I can't help but think about it every so often, like, what's it doing, right? What's I mean, the long-term effect? I, that's what this smoke is doing. Yep. What the smoke is doing, where it's going, how long it will be there, that's the new focus for this team of meteorologists at Winnipeg's National Storm Prediction Center, one of seven such offices across Canada. We're the first American news crew to see their smoke forecasting in action. Dave Carlson is the senior meteorologist. It's the same in that what you're doing is you're tracking the air currents as they move across the country. Um, but the one difference is that we have to figure out is that smoke, which is quite often above the surface, is that going to come down to the surface? If it stays above the surface, that's when you get kind of the haze and maybe it feels a little cooler. The danger is when it comes down. Yeah, yeah, that's really bad uh, for, for, for breathing. I mean, it's, it, you can smell it, you can almost taste it sometimes. More than 5,000 fires are burning in Canada, a country that's home to almost 10% of the world's forests. I guess it's where there's, it's not where there's smoke, there's fire, it's where there's fire, there's going to be smoke. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you are right about how much, how much ground it covers, because uh, the smoke that we're seeing above, uh, above our heads today, that's from like northern Alberta or maybe even BC, and uh, you know, down in New York City, they were getting smoke from, from Ontario and Quebec fires. Um, sometimes the, the smoke from the fires in Canada makes it across the Atlantic Ocean and goes into, into Europe. It's, it's quite amazing how far this stuff can travel. Let's look at that again. Most of the smoke clouds hovering over the Twin Cities come from Canada's Pacific Northwest, the provinces of Alberta, British Columbia, and the Northwest Territories. The distance from the city of Yellowknife to the city of Minneapolis, more than 2,000 miles. That's about the same distance as Minneapolis to Mexico City. What moves quicker? Does the smoke move quicker or a storm system? Or are they related? Uh, they're kind of related. It's changed uh, the way thunderstorms are forming or are not forming because one of the ingredients you need for thunderstorms is heat at the surface. If you have that haze or that smoke blocking the sun from coming in, then you're not going to get as many thunderstorms. It's kind of affected our ability to forecast that as well. In Minnesota, there's no question it's been a much quieter year when it comes to severe weather, with smoke and an abnormal jet stream as key factors. A next weather analysis of thunderstorm and tornado warnings across the state, counting just over 400 alerts since this time last year. In each of the previous four years, there's been more than a thousand. The rainfall impact speaks for itself. Just look at this week's drought monitor for the state of Minnesota. Colors reserved for autumn leaves, not the joy of summer. It's turned this vicious cycle because we need the rain, but the more smoke there is, it disrupts the atmosphere and breaks up the rain. Yeah, and uh, so what we need is we just need a, a change in the weather pattern to move out that smoke so that we can get the thunderstorms, get the rain, and then that'll also wash out any other smoke that's in the atmosphere. Have we reached a point of no return in the sense that you as a meteorologist, you're looking at storms and now you're going to be looking at smoke almost all the time? Yeah, it seems to me that we're going to be looking at both storms and smoke all the time. It's uh, just kind of a fact of life for us now. A fact now and well into the future. As the climate changes, we'll have to adapt too.
I'm here now in the next weather center with Chief Meteorologist Chris Shaver. He makes it sound so easy. Oh, we'll just need a weather pattern to change. This yeah. is something you have to be watching too. Oh, big time. I mean, I've been doing this meteorology on television for over 20 years, and I never would imagine the day I'd be tracking smoke. Uh, issuing air quality alerts as often as we do. And we lived through some of those days. You were showing that footage where it was so thick, it was affecting the visibility, almost like a fog. It's and, terrible. And how do you predict senses? How do you predict whether it's going to go up, whether it's going to go down? And how do you account for new fires or whether they're making progress on the ground? You can't forecast this stuff seven days out. No, you know, it, it, and it's a whole new science in a way. We always talk about accuracy within the first few days. We're spot on. It gets a little harder a week out. But one change in them conquering some of those fires or them spreading changes everything. It's like the butterfly effect. And uh, I love meteorology because it's always something new and different. But that different thing isn't always a good thing. It's important, and we appreciate all your kind of foreshadowing of it. And Chris, uh, thank you, Chris. And Frank and Amelia, tomorrow night, our next special report about what we do with this information with Chris's forecast and the steps we can take to protect ourselves. All right, Jonah, Chris, thank you.